Silicon Valley's dirtiest secret, Apple's imaginary watch buyers, and a group of Girl Scouts amaze Obama. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 301 for Tuesday, March 24th, 2015. This is the show where we give you a quick roundup of today's tech news, plus we chat with a journalist or a newsmaker. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies is the most comfortable and hip underwear you will ever wear. Check out all the styles and get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the news. According to a recent Labor Department report, the U.S. added nearly 300,000 new jobs last month, and the unemployment rate plunged lower than it's been in nearly a decade. We can thank the current boom in Silicon Valley for all those fantastic new jobs, right? Maybe, maybe not. Here to talk to us about the tech industry's real effect on jobs, and especially jobs for millennials with college degrees, is David R. Wheeler, professor of journalism and freelance writer for The New York Times, the New Republic, The Atlantic, and CNN. Welcome, David. Thank you so much for having me. So you write that the current labor statistics are a little misleading when it comes to recent college graduates. Yes, there are jobs, but are they the kind of jobs that college graduates have been able to choose from in the past? Right, right. And I should say I love, just as much as anyone else, I love waking up to uh, headlines that say the uh, economy is improving and that the unemployment rate is going down. I love having a, my morning cup of coffee and looking at this great you know, economic news. But the truth is that a lot of people are just, they're, they're so disgusted by their job prospects that they are dropping out of the labor market entirely. And of course, as we all know, uh, th um, those people are not accounted for uh, when you're looking at the drop in and uh, the people who are uh, drawing unemployment. So um, it, it's dropping lower. But of course, um, the uh, uh, the the problem is that a lot of people just have have given up looking for work uh, entirely. So they're not even included in the number of unemployed. Right. So they, so they didn't even show up in in uh, in that number at all. So um, and and I and it's not that um, it, it's not that Silicon Valley has um, has erased all good jobs. It's just that we are in our, our our current situation is that we are sprinting toward a future where um, if we continue down the current path we're on, in my opinion, we're in in America right now. We say that um, we believe that hard work and a good education will get you a decent middle class life. You will be rewarded for hard work and a good education, but we are sprinting towards a future where that is no longer the case. And it is because of um, a lot of the uh, tactics employed by Silicon Valley. So that's what I'm trying to draw people's attention to. I mean, you say that we're headed towards a feudal state. <laughs> right, right. Um, and uh, so the, the problem is that um, a tiny handful of billionaires are, are profiting from the current system. Um, as, as Robert Reich uh, puts it, he's, the, he's a professor at Berkeley and uh, uh, the former um, labor secretary under Bill Clinton. He calls it the share the scraps economy. Um, we, we like to talk about the sharing economy, and it makes us feel so warm and fuzzy inside the sharing economy. But the truth is that the, the sharing economy means that a tiny, tiny handful of people profit from that app or that software, and everyone else is fighting over the scraps. So, for example, um, uh, in the past, you used to be able to... Um, have it make a living from, let's say, um, if you didn't have a whole lot else going for you, you could make a living as a cab driver. Um, and that job was secure. But what Uber uh, 
is doing is dismantling, uh, dismantling the the system that we've created that says if you work hard, you can have this stable job. And instead, uh, the Uber model is that um, everything's a freelance gig. There is no job stability whatsoever. Um, you cannot rely on decent wages. And so all of that is out the window because that tiny handful of people um, can make more money off of it and everyone else suffers. Um, and this isn't just uh, affecting, you know, cab drivers. Um, let's look at what has happened to uh, the newspaper industry. Um, we've lost tens of thousands of jobs and those were not replaced by um, online digital economy jobs. Wouldn't that have been great? Wouldn't that have been wonderful to use this amazing technology that we have to live in this amazing time of the internet um, if we had created as many digital economy uh, reporting jobs as we lost um, when in fact, you know, we, we've lost tens of thousands. Um, music industry, you name it, um, pretty much every industry that is touched by the digital economy, that industry gets decimated. And why can't we have, why can't we have both the amazing technology and a great economy to go along with it? You know, uh, the, the amazing technology plus uh, increasing living standards. Uh, why can't we have both? Right. So what you're saying is there's this, you know, Uber has this sort of veneer of, oh, fancy, I can be an Uber driver, but you can't afford to live in San Francisco. You know, you can't afford to raise a family and live in San Francisco and be an Uber driver. And exactly. when you talk about the journalists, I mean, the, the, the journalists in all the online areas, they're not getting paid the same that journalists were getting paid when they worked for the San Francisco Chronicle. Exactly, so. exactly. Um, and and it, it, if that were the case, how wonderful would that be? I mean, if you think of all the uh, the new platforms available for multimedia journalists, the the, the amazing uh, new technologies that allow us to tell stories, important stories, stories that matter in in all kinds of different ways, reach larger audiences. So the technology is amazing. It is something that we should marvel at. <laughs> it's a wonderful and beautiful thing. Um, but it is, uh, it, 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 we don't want to live in a world where everybody has an iPhone and nobody has a job. Right. So, I mean, let's take millennials. You, that's what the focus of your article. It's complicated because, you know, the breakout poster boys at Silicon Valley, Mark Zuckerberg, Travis Klinik, the founder of Uber, they're creating services that are often geared towards millennials but what you're saying is they're also at the same time getting rid of these jobs that are for the people they're making services for. Exactly. There's a misconception that um, uh, that the millennials are just shrugging off the bad um, job market and they're saying, you know what, um, we will just uh, take our great idea to Silicon Valley, we'll become an entrepreneur, we'll create an amazing app, and we will become overnight millionaires. That's that's the misconception, and, and I think maybe the older generations might uh, suffer from that misconception a little bit. And they'll think, "Oh, the millennials are fine. You know, they're, they're going to come up with the next new app, and they're going to be, you know, an overnight sensation. They're going to be fine. They'll be entrepreneurs, and uh, and they're smart, so so it'll be fine." But let's look at the. If you're going to, let's say you're going to use all available technology at your disposal right now, if you want to be an entrepreneur. So if you're a millennial and you're an entrepreneur and you have a great idea, what are you going to do? You're probably going to start with, if you want funding, you're going to start with probably Kickstarter, mm -hmm. okay? By Kickstarter's own uh, admission on their website. And if you go, it's it's there. I checked it right before uh, we started the, the program. Um, only 38.7% of uh, Kickstarter projects actually get funded. Well, let's be generous and say that that's 40% 40, 40 of Kickstarter projects. Indiegogo is even worse, by the way. But, so we'll, we'll take the optimistic one and we'll, and we'll, go, with, uh, uh, we'll go with Kickstarter. So let's, let's be optimistic, be generous, and say 40% of, uh, of Kickstarter uh, campaigns succeed. Well, so that's already 60% who have failed. Now let's take the 40%. So let's start with 100 people. So you've got 100 people, 100 millennials who have a great idea and they want to start um, a business. So they um, only, if they do a Kickstarter campaign, 40 of those 100 
uh, people will be successful. And then that's just getting the seed money. So then after that, you actually have to run your business. And the standard, the standard statistic, most places that you look, the standard statistic is eight out of 10 businesses fail. So that means of the 40 people who got a successful Kickstarter um, campaign funded, only eight of those 40. So eight people out of 100 are going to be a successful entrepreneur. Those are not good odds. 8% if you want to just shrug off a bad economy and say, I'll just be an entrepreneur. Right. And then there's just the myth of Kickstarter in general, where a lot of people go there already with the funding. And so they're creating uh, right. this, you know, they're the, the Pebble Watch, for example. I mean, there's Upstart. It's great that there's a watch that isn't created by one of the big companies. But at the same time, they came there with money and now they went back for a Kickstarter, another Kickstarter campaigning where they're already a really successful company. So, I mean, that's another side of it, too. It's like that's someone is creating that myth of by coming to Kickstarter Indiegogo with already having projects mo mostly fully funded. You are so right. This is there's a lot of opportunity for dishonesty now in the digital economy, and especially when you're putting everything out there. All my Facebook friends know everything I'm doing. I can't fail, so I have to I have to make it look like I'm succeeding, or I have to engineer a success first, and then pretend like I'm an amazing you know Kickstarter sensation like you like you just mentioned. Yeah, that's a big problem. Right. So, so what can we do? To, is there anything we can do to change the course of what's currently going on right now? Yes. Um, let's. Uh, one thing is let's have a national conversation about the direction this um, job market is headed. Let's have a national conversation about it. People on this is this is a nonpartisan. Um, this is a nonpartisan conversation. When the economy collapsed, and you know, when when the financial crisis happened in 07, you had uh, as a reaction to that, you know, when we were in the doldrums in 07, 08, 09, you had reactions on both sides of the political spectrum. Uh, you had, of course, Occupy Wall Street on the left, but then you had the Tea Party on the right, and both agreed that Wall Street should stop its shenanigans, and nobody had any trouble taking Wall Street to task for their bad stewardship of the economy. So we're allowed to criticize uh, Wall Street. We're allowed to um, ask Washington to do something about the abusive practices of Wall Street, but yet we're not allowed to say this about Silicon Valley. They have just as much power. They have just as much power. And yet we can't criticize them. We can't ask them to change direction. We can't ask them to be better stewards of our economy because, well, we worship them too, too much. We're, we're, we're in breathless adoration over the Mark Zuckerbergs. And so we're just afraid, oh, well, oh, well you know, we don't want to criticize our, our tech geniuses. Um, but if you look at the direction we're going, then it is clear we need to have a national conversation about this. It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be the share of the scraps economy. We just have to decide as a society, and it's going to be difficult. I'm afraid that it's going to get worse before it gets better, but let's be optimistic and say, if we start the conversation now, we can do something about this. Um, a lot of people, when I talk to them about this, they 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 sort of recoil a little bit and they say, oh, are you Uber's some kind cool. of... <laughs> right, right. Well, what, what do you have against technological progress? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, let's use every available technology Let's and let's use it in the best possible way. That's not what's happening. Uh, example that we all have uh, experience with. Have you ever had a pleasant conversation with an automated system when you've called a company and you've needed to talk to a real person? Has any automated system actually understood the words that you're saying? No. Uh, this has not happened to me. Instead, I clear my throat or cough and they say, I'm sorry, I did not understand your you know, selection. So it's, it's crazy that we think that we're so advanced that we can just automate everything. We still need human beings. I am I am pro technology and also pro human being. Let's let's use let, let's be in harmony, human beings and technology, uh, to create a better society rather than just saying, oh, let's automate everything. Uh, because when you do that, you run into um, some pretty serious problems. Another example would be the for-profit online 
uh, colleges. Now, let me let me disclaimer: the university I work for has online programs. Yale is getting ready to launch an online program. Nothing against online programs, college programs when they work well. That's wonderful when they work well. When there's still a, a, a small you know student faculty ratio. That's wonderful. That's great. That's that's the best use of, of technology. But what's happening is half of all federal um, student loans, 50 percent is going to the 10 percent of students who are enrolling in for profit online colleges. Those for profit online colleges have uh, the students who go there more than half drop out. So you have loan default rates that are sky high. And it is because we've embraced sloppy technology rather than smooth technology, rather than quality technology. This is the conversation we should be having across the country. I so think. you're not against online courses from Harvard, you're the, the for-profit ones you're talking about. And a lot of people don't understand how that works, but you know, some of the schools, they're, they're not, you know, they are making a lot of money and it's exactly what we're talking about. Those people are graduating from college and they're not the jobs for them. They can never pay off those loans, correct? Exactly. And and those are the people who graduate. <laughs> you know, uh, most of the people who enroll in these for-profit online colleges don't graduate. And the ones who do, um, those diplomas are, are not um, considered uh, of the same quality as a, as an established uh, institution of higher education. Right. So what about the workers without college educations? I know that, you know, a lot of the, the college educated people are taking those jobs, taking jobs that were formerly for people that didn't have educations. And so then there are a lot of people without jobs at all. Today, CNN mm -hmm. had an opinion piece that said Silicon Valley could afford to end poverty. They have that much money, but they're not doing enough. Uh, what do you think about this part of the piece? Right. Um, there is an eventual solution to this that I will go ahead and jump straight to that solution. Um, uh, it, it, it's a difficult, it's a difficult problem, and the the recommendations, you know, my, my suggestions of, of the things I mentioned earlier, I think could help the entire economy, um, both uh, jobs that require college degrees and jobs that don't. Um, let me jump to an eventual solution. Now, this is still decades ahead, but eventually, you know, I, I, I joked about the terrible automated system that I call when I try to call a company or my bank or something, you know, I get an automated system mm -hmm. and it's and it's very sloppy right now. But we've seen that 3D printers can actually print a car. It happened. We've seen, uh, you know, Google has a self-driving car. So if you think about all the millions of manufacturing jobs and you think about all the millions of truck driver, tractor trailer, delivery truck driver jobs, you know, all those jobs decades down the road, I realize decades down the road will eventually be um, automated. That self-driving car will go from a novelty to um, actually replacing human workers at that point. And here's where Silicon Valley can really take the lead, because a lot of Silicon Valley thinkers have embraced uh, universal basic income. We already spend, already, as it is today, we already spend $1 trillion in state and federal uh, funds, mm -hmm. trillion with a T, <laughs> uh, in um, in our, our welfare system, our social safety net, a trillion dollars we already spend. It's clunky. It is, um, it's, it's punitive. You know, it punishes people who can't find work. If we took that money and we just cut everyone a check, rich, poor, middle class, doesn't matter, cut everybody a check, that would be um, a more efficient a use of that money. Libertarians love it because it's smaller government, it's simpler, and it emphasizes personal responsibility. Uh, liberals like it because um, they're, uh, you know, they tend to be more concerned about uh, social safety net in general. So um, it's going to be a hard sell at the moment because at, at at the moment people still believe, and I think this will be the case for the next uh, for the next few years. Um, I want the, what I'm getting ready to describe, I want to last for as long as possible. Good, a good education and hard work will uh, make you a success in this country. I want that to be true for as many years to come as possible. We might need some 
some artificial help in the meantime, between now and when robots rule the world and we don't need to work anymore, we, we're, we're going to need a bridge to that future. And um, uh, uh, that might mean, and, and there are some centrist thinkers. I'm thinking of Bill Galston from, uh, he's a Wall Street Journal uh, columnist. He works at the Brookings Institution. I think he's a brilliant man. Uh, he's a centrist. You know, he's not a, a left wing or right wing guy. A centrist. He says that the government, like it or not, I love to use the, the words like it or not, the government is going to have to play a part and help the middle class through this uh, transition uh, that we're in right now. Well, that's big ideas. This seems like it would be another conversation. So I definitely would love to have you on again. Um, David R. Wheeler, you have a lot of interesting articles out there, not just on economics and jobs, a lot a lot of tech, you have an interesting tech angle. So thank you so much for coming on. Uh, what your Twitter handle is David underscore R underscore Wheeler, correct? Yes, yes. And and by the way, thank you so much for having me. Um, uh, if, if that Twitter handle is too hard to remember, just just type in my name, David, with a middle initial R Wheeler, and my my Twitter profile will probably come up. So, well, But it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. And coming up, you. pay your bills directly from Gmail, and Clash of Clans is trying to steal all my gems. But first, you need to know about MeUndies.com. We spend 90% of our life in underwear. With MeUndies, you'll get great fitting underwear that's two times softer than cotton. MeUndies are the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. Plus, they're stylish. And even if you never plan to show them off to anyone, you will know how stylish you are. And that's what counts. There are so many styles. Polka dots, plaid, funky, pinstripes, dozens of colors for both men and women. Check out the photos yourself at MeUndies.com slash twit. This level of quality would typically retail for two times the MeUndies price, but no retail middlemen means you save more. They also use a CO2 neutral process with a low carbon footprint. It saves water and energy due to their spun dyed fiber process. Get yourself some good underwear. Go to MeUndies.com slash twit and get 20% off and free shipping on your first order. Save even more when you buy a pack. They guarantee you'll be happy or your first pair is free. They do not want you to send them back. That's 20% off when you go to MeUndies.com slash twit. We thank MeUndies for their support of tech news tonight. And now on to a few more stories we're following today. Recode reports that Google is working on a project that will let you receive and pay bills with debit or credit cards directly from the Inbox app and Gmail. We could start using this rumored service as early as this year. Documents obtained by Recode imply that the ability to pay bills through Gmail is named or codenamed Pony Express, but this has not yet been verified by Google. I think that will lose some more jobs and all the people that print those envelopes in the bills that they send me all the time. It looks like Clash of Clans makes Supercell Clash of Clans maker Supercell can take a well-earned break from raiding and pillaging villages while they sit back and count all their gems. According to Reuters, the company behind Clash of Clans doubled their profits and tripled their sales last year, which makes them unique among other popular mobile game makers who have historically lacked staying power. Supercell was founded way, way back in 2010. 9 to 5 Mac Mark Gurman's sources tell him that as we near the Apple Watch pre-order date of April 11th, Apple is busy training store employees in personal fashion needs and styling wants. Gurman got his hands on documents that include sample personas designed to school employees. For example, there's Susanna, who hasn't worn a watch in a long time, but wants to splurge. And Lee, who works at a ser as a server in a restaurant, but has narrowed down his Apple Watch choices to those in the $600 to $1,000 price range. So far, I did not see Megan, mother of three, who is desperately trying to come up with a list of legitimate reasons she can expense her Apple Watch to her employer. And finally tonight, yesterday, Obama hosted the fifth annual White House Science Fair to celebrate the winners of a wide range of science, technology, engineering, and math competitions across the country. Mashable featured a video of one conversation Obama had with a group of six-year-old Girl Scouts from Tulsa who engineered a battery-powered Lego contraption that could turn the pages of a book for someone who wasn't able to turn the pages themselves. Let's watch a little bit of the video from these future scientists in capes. But it's, it's working really well, although you got to read kind of fast. Yeah. 
Are you, really are you guys able to slow it down and speed it up? No. No? So that would require sort of a little bit of an adjustment. Yeah, so we're going to... It gets kind of... It's a prototype. It's a prototype. Yeah. <laughs> it's a prototype. <sighs> that was my favorite video, but you can uh, check our link in the show notes and see the other... Uh, experiments that were in this year's competition. And that is it for this edition of Tech News tonight. Have you taken our annual audience survey yet? Go to twit.tv slash survey and tell us what you think. The survey is anonymous and we really want to know what you think so we can make this and all our other Twit shows better. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2. Write to us at tn2 at twit.tv and you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And keep sending us your selfies watching Tech News tonight. Today's TN2 selfie fan of the day is Joe Duganzik. He's a lighting guru out of Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for watching the show and sending in your selfie. And thank you for all those lighting videos from your YouTube channel. I hope my Apple Watch will be able to control my lights. We really love the images that everyone has sent in so far, and we want to see more. Just tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Plus, or Instagram. And if you don't want to post them on your social media, I get it. You can always email the, them directly to me at megan at twit.tv or directly to tn2 at twit.tv. And remember to tell us a little bit about yourself, and we might show your selfie on the show. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News, today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.